Hello and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to go through rods and cone cells as photoreceptors. So click here if you haven't subscribed already to make sure you don't miss out on any of the videos. So just a little bit about receptors. These are the cells which detect a change in your environment and each receptor responds to a specific stimulus and once they respond if the stimulus is big enough, so if the change in the environment was big enough, it will lead to an action potential. And you can watch here my video on action potentials to find out more. Now in this video, I'm just gonna be going through rods and cones. I've already have a previous video on the receptor psinium corpus school, which again, I'll link here so you can have a look. So we'll be looking at the structure of the rods and cones and what actually has to happen so that the stimulus of light, which they detect, creates a big enough voltage so that they exceed the threshold and an action potential is generated. So the human retina, this is where we find the rods and cones. And you don't need to know the structure of the eye for A-level biology AQA. You just need to be aware that it's in the retina that you find these photoreceptors. And we're going to come back to the importance of the fovea later on. So let's start with the rod cells. First of all, they're called rods because they are rod-like in shape. And these are the cells which do not distinguish between different wavelengths of light, or in other words, colours. Instead, it just processes images in black and white. Now they can detect light at very, very low light intensities. Um, and that is because of this concept called retinal convergence. So we'll have a look at what that term means. So first of all, linking to what we said about receptors, they detect a stimulus. And if the stimulus is big enough, it will create a generator potential or an action potential. And in the case of rod cells, what they will be doing is absorbing the light intensity and there is a protein, a pigment inside of these cells called rhodopsin. And if a big enough light intensity is absorbed, it will break down that pigment. And the breaking down of that pigment is what can then go on to trigger an action potential. So if enough pigment has been broken down, then for the threshold to be met in a bipolar cell, which are the cells that link the rod cells to the sensory neuron, then an action potential can occur. Now, it doesn't take a lot of light energy to break down rhodopsin, which is one reason why the rod cells do function even at very, very low light intensities. But there's also a second reason why even if it's very dark, we're still able to see in black and white. And that is because of that concept, retinal convergence. And this means that you actually have multiple rod cells connecting to one bipolar cell. And the advantage of that is this concept called summation. And in particular, it's spatial summation. So if we have a look over here, we have three rod cells connecting to one bipolar cell. And each of these rod cells in that low light intensity, the rhodopsin will be broken down. And collectively, all of that broken down pigment will then hopefully result in a big enough stimulus to trigger an action potential. And that's what spatial summation is. Summation or sum just meaning adding together. So it's adding together the impact that we see from these three rod cells and collectively that is enough to reach that action potential threshold. Now that's an advantage because it means we're still able to see in black and white even at low light intensities. So that is a survival mechanism. The downside though is it provides a low visual acuity. And what we mean by that is you don't have very accurate vision in these lower light intensities. So because you have multiple rod cells connecting to one bipolar and then one sensory neuron, 
your brain actually cannot distinguish between the separate light sources because it could be a light source that was triggered by any one of these three. And therefore, two light sources close together cannot be seen as separate. So that's what we mean by low visual acuity. And you might have noticed this, if you've ever had to get up in the night for whatever reason, or you've been walking in the dark, you first of all will probably have noticed you only have black and white vision. But secondly, you might bump into objects, you can't quite see everything clearly. And that is because of this retinal convergence resulting in low visual acuity. So next, let's have a look at the cone cells. So the cone cells, there's three different types of cone cells. And the only thing that's different about them is the color pigment they have. Now they're all cone shaped, like we can see here. And they all have a type of iodopsin pigment, but one type is red, another is green, and the final is blue. And they'll all absorb different wavelengths of light and that is why when it's processed in the brain, you see either red, green, or blue. And we can clearly see more than those three colors. The reason for that is depending on the proportion of the different red, green, and blue cone cells, which are stimulated, we perceive a whole range of different colors. So iodopsin is only broken down if there is a high light intensity which is why you don't see colors when it's very, very dark, because there's not enough light energy to break down the iodopsin and trigger an action potential. So it's only when it's quite bright you can see colors. Now this is partly because iodopsin does require more energy, more light energy to break down the pigment, but the second reason is there is no retinal convergence and therefore there's no spatial summation. So you only have one cone cell connected to one bipolar cell. So that is the reason why you don't see colours in the dark. Now the positive of this is because you only have one cone cell connecting to one bipolar cell, the brain can distinguish between separate sources of light and therefore cone cells provide a high visual acuity meaning you do have much, much sharper, clearer vision in colour. The last thing then is going back to this human retina diagram, well, the whole eyeball, but focusing on the human retina and the favea. And the reason that this is relevant is the distribution of rods and cone cells throughout that retina is uneven. And the favea, this part here, is directly opposite the lens, and therefore it receives the highest light intensity in your eye. And that is why at the favea, we can see here the number of cells, the number of cone cells is at its highest at the favea. And that's because cone cells function at the highest light intensities. Rod cells, you find more of those further away because they can still trigger action potentials even at lower light intensities. So that is the distribution of them. Final thing to point out, it's not on the spec, but this bit here, the blind spot, this is the part of the retina which has no rod cells and no cone cells. So there are no photoreceptors and no light can be detected at that particular point in the retina. So that's all you need to know for the rods and cone cells. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, give it a thumbs up.